So here we're going to uh, close up the reptile unit by talking about some species that are particularly present here in western Kentucky. And um, so looking at turtles, lizards, and snakes, spending most of our time looking at snakes because honestly that's what really people want to talk about. So here are a few groups of turtles. And so the big idea here is just be able to recognize some primary characteristics. There's not going to be, you know, we're not going to go over the uh, physiology or any of that of each of these, but we can just talk about these so that you can see what you know and be able to recognize things. So this is called a musk turtle. These are very common around here. The two lines on their face give them away. And uh, they're called musk turtles because of this musk that they release that really stinks. Snapping turtle. These are common as well. Oftentimes you see them on the side of the road basking or uh, they spend a lot of time underwater. They're hard to catch unless you're like that dude that catches them called Turtle Man. It's really strange. And they're called snapping turtles because they snap. They have these big beaks and very uh, thick shell. And uh, they almost look like some like underwater dragon. Now, the alligator snapping turtle looks even worse than that. I don't think I have a picture of one of those. Um, but these are primarily aquatic. Here's your eastern box turtle. These are more like a tortoise um, than a... So they're more terrestrial species. They have a dome-like shell, a very colorful type shell. These are the kind that you sometimes see in the yard. The painted turtle. They are called the painted turtle because of their coloration, yellow and red stripes on them. Sometimes they'll get confused with musk turtles, but the musk turtle, again, has these very distinct stripes on its head, whereas the painted turtle is going to have more uh, bright coloration. And then the softshell turtle. I've seen one of these in my life. Um, they're known because of their softer shell. They have this circular kind of shell as well. It's flat and a really long snout. So some lizards. There's the fence lizard. Probably got its name for a reason. But they're gray to brown uh, color. They have a more defined neck than some of the other lizards that we have around here, which we'll look at. And they have that blue belly in males in particular that is very distinct. This is what you're usually going to see around here is the uh, skink. If there's a five line skink, which has the five lines on the dorsal, very thick neck as well. And then there's the ground skink, which is more brown coloration, thicker stripes on its back and uh, not as many of them, really small legs. And you can see there's almost no neck on this guy. And so moving on to snakes. Copperhead snake, they have a really stout body. Uh, some of, most, a lot of them have this orange tinge, which is where they get their name, um, but it can be a lot of different color. There's the cross bands that are very distinct and that are solid on the back in particular. And I think that's important for change. Uh, you know, there's another species that they're often confused with. Their eyes, they have these, um, their eyes aren't right, the pupils aren't round, and that's another way. And their head is very uh, big, big shovel shaped head. Most of them are uh, active during the day, and their bite is rarely fatal, uh, but it's considered one of the more painful bites. The cottonmouth snake, um, they can be almost black to brown and green like this one here, typically seen in the water or near the water. You can tell it's a cotton mouth. It's really thick and they will oftentimes swim with their head out of the water like you see here. They get their name from their white mouth. These are also called water moccasins as well. And um, they will show their mouth when they're annoyed and they'll that's how they kind of, that's their warning flash, like look at my teeth, stay away. They sometimes will wag their tails as well, but they don't have, uh, they don't have rattles. And again, the way that you can tell that this is a cottonmouth, you know, if you're out in a boat and you see a snake and you're like, let's kill it, don't kill it. Because 
uh, it's not bothering you. Now, it may try to get in your boat. If it tries to get in your boat, you may want to deal with it. But you can tell it's a bad one uh, when it's got its head out of the water. And what I mean by bad is venomous. And then the timber rattler. Um, big, thick snake again. Big head, shaped like a shovel. Obviously, the rattle is going to give it away. Uh, and the rattle is used as a warning sign to so get away from me. I don't want to mess with you. That kind of thing. And we have these little guys called pygmy rattlers. They're called that because they're really small. Very bright coloration. A lot of them have this uh, orange stripe on them. Usually a uh, lighter color as well. And uh, very well camouflaged. People usually see them uh, when it's too late. So uh, just be careful with those guys. And here we go. Back to the more common snakes. This is a common king snake. Some of these things have been called everything under the sun. Everybody's got a name for them. Uh, rat snakes and chicken snakes and uh, there's a lot of that kind of thing. But common king snake, uh, large black snake, um, a lot of variability on the back as you can see there with the almost stripes. Um, the belly has a lot of variability on it as well. Some of them are, most of them are diurnal, but nocturnal during the summer. These are uh, constrictors, and so the way that they kill things is by wrapping around them, and they actually specialize in eating other snakes, which is where they get their name. They are the king. And so if you see one of these, leave it alone. It'll keep the copperheads away. The corn snake is a smaller type of constrictor. It uh, is a burrower. So they will burrow. They're usually this really bright orange and red. These are common around here, really docile type snakes. Then there's the garter snake. It is not docile. Um, these vary in color too. Typically they have these stripes the length of their body, but they can have this uh, speckled type pattern as well. And garter snakes are very aggressive, very quick to bite if they're threatened, uh, but they're not venomous. They will flatten their bodies out when they're threatened and they release this kind of musk that is very smelly. The milk snake. Um, you know that it's a milk snake and not a coral snake because the red is on the black, red on black friend of Jack. And so this is a type of king snake um, that is a constrictor and have that, they're very secretive, usually found under things. Uh, their name actually comes from a belief that they milked cows. That's how they got their food. Uh, I'd like to know the story behind that one. Here's a snake called the northern water snake. And um, this particular snake is often confused with the copperhead, as you can see. And it's confused with the uh, uh, water moccasin as well. They have... Uh, that cross pattern, a banded pattern there as well, but it's different than copperheads. And honestly, you know, see how the copperhead is thin on the dorsal part here and thicker on the sides. And you have that different with this water snake. It's thick on top. It's one of the giveaways. The head shape is going to be different. The eye shape is going to be different. But these are really robust snakes as well, and they're very easily confused with um, copperheads and um, cottonmouths. They live in the water and near the water. They eat fish. They can eat terrestrial prey as well. They have a, uh, they are pretty quick to bite too, a pretty aggressive snake. And they um, have an anticoagulant in their blood, which causes their prey to bleed out, but they can kill their prey by constricting. Is a red-bellied water snake, um, really black, and then they get their name from their red belly, of course. They typically will anchor their body in vegetation, so I've seen them like basking in a bush, like coiled up. They will anchor their body on that vegetation and will actually dip their head into the water to fish. Uh, another really aggressive snake, they don't tend to like being messed with. So just stay away from it. It's not going to kill you or anything, but it probably would uh, bite you pretty good. And then the ring snake. Um, 
They get their name from the ring around their head, and they live in moist habitats, usually darker, pretty secretive animal, very docile, but they do have venom. That's a lesser known fact. It's not a bad type of venom, but it's venom nonetheless. And they will coil their tail here like you see when they feel threatened.